Winter is coming. The first great lesson of life to learn is that winter will always come. Not only in the winter of cold and wind and ice and snow, but the human winters of despair and loneliness or disappointment or tragedy. Greetings from beautiful British Columbia and welcome to Stir Up Your Purpose channel. I believe all is well with you. It is winter here. That opening quote is a combination of the words of Lord Stark from the Game of Thrones and from the book written by Jim Rohn titled The Seasons of Life. I love the wisdom and insights of Jim Rohn and my favorite book is The Seasons of Life, which happens to be his first book. And as Ronald Reynolds said in the foreword, The Seasons of Life is but a momentary glimpse at the depth of the character of Jim Rohn. His ability for reawakening the sleeping spirit residing within us all is most welcome in a time of change and challenge. Come along with me as I share with you the words of Jim Rohn on the winter season. The winter. Winter, like spring, is a season which can make its brief appearance during any season as a brief reminder of its ultimate power. In midsummer, while we consciously stand our carefully planted crops, winter can momentarily descend upon us as if threatening to take away the fruits of our efforts. Winter can make its threatening appearance during the season of opportunity, the spring, and if we do not quickly respond to cancel its potentially devastating effect, the season of opportunity will be taken from us by one of the storms of life, leaving us with yet another full year of waiting. Winter can prematurely appear during the season of harvest, the fall, just as we are about to reap the rewards of expended human effort and leave us with crops or results which are of little value. The first great lesson of life to learn is that winter will always come. Not only in the winter of cold and wind and ice and snow, but the human winters of despair and loneliness or disappointment or tragedy. It is winter when prayers go unanswered or when the acts of our children leave us shaken and stunned. It is winter when the economy turns against us or when creditors come after us. It is winter when competition threatens or when a friend takes advantage. Winter comes in many forms and at any time, both to the planter of crops as well as to the person in business or even to our personal lives. The arrival of winter finds us in one of two categories. Either we are prepared or we are unprepared. For those who are prepared, who have planted abundantly in the spring, gathered their crops carefully during the summer, and harvested massively during the fall, winter can be yet another season of opportunity. It can be a time for reading, a time for planning, a time for gathering our strength for the coming spring, and a time for taking comfortable shelter. It can be a time of great enjoyment, a time to be shared with those we love, and with those with whom we have labored. It is a time of thanksgiving, 
and a time for the sharing of life's bounteous gifts. Winter is a time for being grateful, both for what we have as well as for what we can yet achieve. Winter is a time for rest, but not excessive rest. It is a time to enjoy the fruits of our labors, but not a time for gluttony. It is a time for warm conversations, but not a time for gossip. It is a time of gratitude, but not a time for complacency. It is a time to be proud, but not a time to be egotistical. What we do with our time, with ourselves, with our friends, and with our attitudes during the season of winter determines what we will do with the coming spring. We are meant to constantly improve our conditions, ourselves, and our results. We either improve or we regress. For never do we remain the same. If we do not improve, it is because we do not use our intelligence, our reasoning, and our full potential. And finally, what we do not use, we lose. Through lack of of use, we may lose our intelligence, reasoning, potential, and strength. And when lack of use or misuse cost us these worthy human attributes, we predictably regress. Again, it is a basic law of life that demands either human progression or human regression. To those who are prepared for winter's arrival, let them use winter as they will use spring to take advantage. To those who are unprepared, the arrival of winter is a time for regret and a time for sorrow. Having lacked the willingness to pay the pain of earlier discipline, we now pay the heavier pain of regret. The burdens and chains of discipline will seem insignificant when compared to the massive weights and cumbersome restraints of regret. Regret is an empty storehouse and an empty kitchen when the coming fall is yet a full year away. Even with the arrival of spring, our efforts will be expended with an empty stomach and an empty pause. To the prepared, winter is springtime in yet another form. But to those who are ill prepared, winter's arrival is full of horror and uncertainty. Love and harmony give way to accusations and anger. The time to experience the horror of a winter for which we are unprepared is in the springtime and in our mind. Let the imagination paint for us the chilling winds, snow-blown fields, and ice-covered trees. Let us experience in our mind's eye the wailing of a hungry child and the disappointment showing in the eyes of the one we love. Let us emotionally experience the fumbling for excuses and apologies for our past mistakes and the fear that comes with a knock on the door or the delivery of the mail. Anticipating these things in advance can provide the shock that moves us into massive effort in the spring, that those efforts might prevent our horrified imaginings from becoming reality. Throughout all the seasons of the year, winter can touch our lives in many small ways, testing us and providing us with subtle reminders of the plight of those whose lives are surrounded by winter. Winter can be a lost opportunity or the loss of love. A winter is when a trusted friend gives you cause for disappointment or when expected business goes to a competitor. A frigid blast from the cold, ash words of someone you love is winter and so is the pessimism or cynicism from someone whose advice and counsel you seek. The major challenge confronting those surrounded by winter is to not let it affect the arrival of spring and our ability to recognize that arrival. Much of life is in learning to always remain part of the solution rather than allowing ourselves to become part of the problem. 
if you are without love, money, or employment, it is a winter. And it's very apparent is because you miss a springtime somewhere. Neglect is always costly, and winter is merely a circumstance, an effect brought on by some earlier cause. Dwelling upon the severity of your personal winter merely makes the winter more difficult to endure. Search the inner confines of your mind and your soul for the purpose of discovering the real cause within you. Adversity is seldom attributable to someone or something outside of ourselves. To blame outside influences for the circumstance of winter is a convenient excuse for misplacing responsibility. It is a normal human tendency to place blame for a winter of life on someone else, which is why most humans reap the result of mediocrity that accompanies such behavior. For things or circumstances to change, human attitudes, opinions, and habits must change. Conversation on how things ought to be or why things aren't fair is just that, conversation. Unproductive conversation is what the lazy and unambitious engage in during the winters of life. For there is a certain euphoria that such empty conversation produces, which dulls the senses from the harsh reality of how things really are. The same euphoria is found in television and those who use it as an escape from their own empty life. It is found in alcohol and other drugs used by those seeking solutions in external means. It is found through idle gossip which allows those who engage in it to overlook their own weaknesses by attacking the weaknesses of others. Let winter find you planning for the arrival of spring not contemplating the errors of commission and omission of last year. Let winter find you with a joyful countenance and a happy heart, with a good word for all those around you, with confidence in the future, not apprehension, with appreciation of the past, not regret, and finally, with gratitude for your achievements, adversities, and uncertain things of, of life, for each as a form of blessing which removes all limitations from the future possibilities of life. Winter is a time for examining, pondering, and introspection. It is a time for re-evaluating both purpose and procedure, for rediscovering an often misplaced sense of purpose. It is a time for finding new ways for solving old dilemmas and for devising unique ways for contributing to others less fortunate than ourselves. It is a time for understanding and controlling anger, that frequent human emotion which causes us to pass judgment without fear deliberation. It is a time to analyze our fairness and to overcome our tendency to hastily spew forth condemnation without full investigation. For such is the height of ignorance. Winter is a time for being sincere with ourselves, about ourselves, when the tendency is to fool ourselves. It is a time for developing the skills that allow us to get along with imperfect people. For even a fool can get along with perfect people. It is also a time for becoming wise enough to know what to say, as well as to know what to overlook and what not to say. The wisdom that comes with the careful use of winter teaches us also that evolution is merely revolution at a slower pace and that constant gradual change is the order of the universe. Only those worthy human attributes of honesty, loyalty, love and trust in God and in our fellow man are meant to remain constant. Winter is a time for being grateful for our achievements or for having endured our lack of achievement. The physically inactive 
season of winter is a time for adding to our storehouse of knowledge through continued education, which in truth does not mean learning things that we do not know, but in learning to behave as we do not now behave. The facts and things of life are automatically learned by each of us when we become inspired with the excitement of high expectation and belief in our abilities. With winter comes the opportunity to catch up on unkept promises and on unanswered letters. It is a time also for encouraging the young who with their inexperiences are insecure and for encouraging the old who because of their experience are apprehensive of the future. Let not winter go without investing much of your time in assuring, teaching and encouraging others. For in so doing, your reward will be an uplifted confidence in yourself. The teacher is always the greatest recipient of the lessons he seeks to teach to others. Let winter find you thinking first of someone else and appreciating and being kind and being gentle. And by all means, let winter find you laughing more, even though the winds blow cold and the snows cover the soil, which will soon bring new life. Thanks for listening. Bye.